<sighs> it's Monday. It's Monday. Now, I can't say that I really am not excited. I mean, yeah, I like long weekends, but Monday, May 24th, 2021. I mean, I'm excited to get into it this week, today. I got a lot to talk about. First off, futures higher across the board. NASDAQ outperforming up about 0.7 last time I checked. Oil, almost 2% higher. Gold and silver, both catching in bids. Silver up over 1%. Gold slightly higher. Cryptos, blasting off of uh, the lows that we hit on Sunday. Um, for a multitude of altcoins other than Bitcoin, we hit uh, new lows, and those most of those have bounced uh, Bitcoin at about 38,000 right now. Like I'm saying, when we're still kind of consolidating here, sitting around this thirty, forty thousand dollar level, uh, and, and I think you know we'll probably be staying here. But of course, it's nice to see uh, you know this happening. Dollar slightly lower, back below 90. Ten year more or less stable. Okay, that's all great. I want to get to one piece of information that we got over the weekend. If you remember, on my Thursday market uh, report, I said that I bought oil. It was down 5% over two days. It rallied 2% or 3% on Friday, and it looks like it's going to be up another 2% today. So almost completely reversing the losses that we saw in the back of the news on the ceasefire uh, between Israel and Hamas. Now, why is that? Well... According to Israel and Hamas, there's no real truce. And, and you just got to look this up and, and decide for yourself. But the article that did it for me, it was basically talking about how, oh, well, you know, not everything that we wanted to be included in this agreement is really being agreed upon. If they break this, then we're going to start firing. Not only that, but there were missiles fired after the truce. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, the market knows this is bullshit. I knew this was bullshit. Hence why I bought oil. Okay? It's not rocket science. I mean, I would have bought it anyways. If it, if it fell on Friday, I probably would have bought more. If it fell today, I probably would have bought more. I mean, this is how I'm playing the market right now. Now, given that, am I going to take some profit today in oil? Probably. Okay. That's great. Um, what I really want to get to today... And we might have to skip the chapter on psycho cybernetic because I don't want to go over 10 minutes on this video. And I think if I do that, I'll probably do that on my post market today because if I do that, I'll probably just hit, I'll hit wait an absurd amount of time. And it already takes me freaking like 45 minutes to upload one of these things. I don't know what fucking internet I got, but it's supposed to be spectrum. I don't know. It's like the best I can get around here, but it's pretty bad anyways. Anyways, Bostic, Raphael Bostic. Atlanta Fed president. Now, if you don't care about this man or listen to what he says, let me tell you one thing. What he says is more important or more, uh, it gives you more information than what Joe Biden says. Or, I mean, Joe Biden, whatever. Joe Biden's a puppet. This guy is a little, actually has more power than Joe Biden. So start looking at these Fed presidents instead of these idiot politicians. Fed presidents are idiots too. But they're not human, so how can I really judge them on a traditional IQ scale, right? Um, anyways, this is the quote from Rafael Bostic. He did an HBO interview. I don't do what Wall Street wants. <laughs> what? I don't do what Wall Street wants. Okay, let's start right here. I'm not even going to talk about the rest of the interview. That's the only line I want to focus on. How was the Fed created? Was it the common man? Was it you and I who said, came together and said, we need a central bank, you know, to stabilize our economy and to help it in times of distress? No. No. It was Wall Street that created the Fed. Okay? Please understand that, at least. Jekyll Island, you can look this up. It was a closely guarded secret. It was only revealed... Uh, in the 1930s, it was done in 1912 or 1910 or whatever, you know, 1913 was when the Fed was created. Okay, four of the most powerful bankers in the U.S. 
A senator and the Secretary of the Treasury went to Jekyll Island to have a secret meeting. Henry Davidson from J.P. Morgan, largest bank on the planet by assets, and all of these banks actually own the Fed, if you didn't know, so... Um, Paul Warburg of Kun Loban Co., I don't know. Uh, Frank Vanderlip of National City Bank, I assume that's Citigroup today. Uh, and Benjamin Strong, who was a very big, big heavy hitter of Bankers Trust Company. I don't know what Bankers Trust is doing, but I know Benjamin Strong is a very heavy hitter. Um, and so they meet, met in secret. I mean, does that make you think a little bit? Why didn't they maybe do this in public? Well, let me tell you, it was because they were planning on how to scheme to fuck you up. Okay? That, that the, the hardest they can possibly do, that was what they were planning. Information is so controlled, you know, they have to be able to convince people that they're needed. They have to be able to push this certain economic paradigm. This is why people need to understand economics, okay? It, it doesn't take money fun functioning brain cells, but they use economics because nobody likes it. Nobody enjoys it. So they just accept whatever is thrown at them because they don't understand it. Well, it doesn't take much to understand this. You need to look at a couple a couple things. So central banks were born to deal with financial panics. Okay, let me tell you. They create financial panics on purpose so that they can pretend that they're solving them, but really all they're doing is consolidating power into their own hands. Okay, and nothing is more, uh, you know, there's no better example than 2008 and this latest 2020 COVID. I, I read an article the other day. Billionaires have gained some absurd amount of wealth during the pandemic. Meanwhile, of course, last Thursday we found out another 440,000 people lost their job, applied for first-time unemployment claims. Hmm. Not only that, but 50% of Americans report weight gain during this crisis, with the, with the average weight gain being 30 pounds. So who's really won? Who's really lost in this scenario? See, central bankers can't come out and tell you this. See, the bought and paid for politicians can't ask central bankers about this. You're not allowed to know any of this information, okay? The only place you're going to get it is right here and on a couple other people's blogs that really care about the right information getting out and care about people. See, you can even watch these Fed presidents. They don't, they, they veil all of their words. In the interview, he said, my only priority is creating jobs. If it happens to create wealth for Wall Street, so be it. Well, first of all, they control all the economic data. <laughs> they run it. So, so this is what we're, we're allowed to know that 440 people, 440,000 people lost their job. What aren't we allowed to know? World population. That's another one. Okay. So, how can I really prove that they systemically create the crises? Well, if you just do a simple correlation and say, what happened in the crises before central banks and what happened in the ones after, right? The ones before were much more benign. They, they weren't that bad. Take the 1921 recession. It lasted six months, okay? And it was over. And we had a and, and that was when they were still controlling interest rates to a certain extent. But they say that that is generally the last free market recession we had, where the economy was allowed to actually correct itself. Okay, so what is? how about the ones when the Federal Reserve is really active? Okay, Great Depression, 2008, stagflation of, of the 80s, of course, and 70s, and the COVID crash. These have been the four most... Uh, abhorrent crises for the middle class in known history. And it all under happened under the guise of central banks. And what happens in every single crisis, the rich get richer, the banks get more powerful, and we get shafted up every possible avenue in the ear, mouth, nose, and places I don't want to go. Okay? So why don't people wake up? Why do they constantly question you when you try to share real information? It's because for people to accept what I'm putting out here, it would completely destroy 
their ego. And I don't mean ego in the sense that a lot of people hear it and they say, well, that guy's got a big ego, you know. Uh, no, it's your sense of self. This artificially created thing that you believe you are through life experiences and it has these certain belief systems and paradigms that it keeps itself locked into to accept some of this factual information some of its opinion but <laughs> whatever it would completely destroy that paradigm and for most people that is so scary they get put in such a state of fear encountering that that they simply say I don't care if it's real. I'm going to continue believing the lie because it makes me more comfortable. I have personally experienced this very recently. I had presented some information to a friend of mine and um and I said, "Well, why, you know, why wouldn't uh you go spread this information? Don't you think there maybe is something going on here?" And he said, yeah, uh, maybe there is. There, pr there probably is something going on here, but I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> I know, man. Well, who are you really hurting? You're hurting yourself, and you're hurting everybody else if you don't let them know the truth, okay? And that extends even deeper into this, like, well, what if the truth would kill them? What does death really mean to you? What does life really mean to you? If you're just sitting on earth, consuming shit, and not really going anywhere, why are you even here, okay? Why are you even here? So, I'm here to put some eye lights on, uh, you know, skylights on these Federal Reserve people who are just sickening, and this whole, this whole system. So, uh, yeah, yeah, this is already long enough. We will get, we'll get to this next chapter of the book later, uh, later today. Um, keep your eyes on, uh, on the dollar today. That's what I'm going to be watching. Staying below 90, that's going to be the primary driver, I think. Um, so, yeah. Like it, subscribe it, do it up, right? All right.